Hi everyone, welcome to this Maker Medic tutorial. Today's topic is ABGs and acid base balance. So, ABGs are a very useful clinical tool in assessing various different types of scenario in acute medicine. And it's important to understand the physiology of acid base balance as it does arise in lots of different contexts. So, first and foremost, let's talk about what exactly is an ABG. So quite simply, the A stands for arterial because a sample is taken from the radial artery in the wrist. And the G stands for gases, meaning the main physiological gases in our body, which are carbon dioxide and oxygen. The uses of an ABG, or a venous blood gas, can be split into two main groups. So one of them is if there is any sort of acute breathing problem whatsoever, and you want to assess the ability of our gas exchange interface to exchange gases. The second group of indications regards the other information that you can get from a blood gas. So even though the term arterial blood gas suggests that the focus is on the carbon dioxide and the oxygen, the machines that we use are also able to give some more information, most importantly the haemoglobin, lactate, glucose and electrolytes. So the benefit of blood gases as opposed to sending lab bloods is that you can get a result within seconds. In most hospitals there will be a few blood gas machines where you take the syringe containing the blood sample, push it into the machine, and you'll be able to get a printout of the results within a few seconds. So if the reason that you're doing a blood gas is because you want to look at the hemoglobin, the lactate, the glucose, or the electrolytes, then a venous blood gas will be able to provide that information, just the same as an ABG. If you're trying to assess the function of the gas exchange interface in an acute breathing problem however you will need an arterial blood gas this is because you want to make sure you analyze the blood that's just come from the lungs where the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels haven't been distorted by passing through respiring tissues so the reason that acid base balance is so important is because our physiology is dependent on the function of enzymes and the function of enzymes in turn is dependent on a few different environmental conditions, mainly pH and temperature. So for our enzymes to be able to function normally, we need to maintain the pH within a narrow range and maintain our temperature within a narrow range. So the main acid in our body is carbon dioxide and the main base is bicarbonate. The carbon dioxide is regulated by the lungs. So by altering the minute ventilation, either up or down, we can make our blood more basic or more acidic by changing the retention of carbon dioxide in our blood. On the other hand, bicarbonate is regulated by the kidneys, which can adjust the rate at which it reabsorbs bicarbonate to make the blood either more basic or more acidic. The key difference between these two mechanisms is that the lungs can react very fast to any changes in acid-base balance, whereas the kidneys take a bit more time to react. The entirety of acid-base balance can be understood by applying this equation. So this is a reversible equation in which carbon dioxide and water can be combined to form carbonic acid, which can then dissociate to release protons and bicarbonate. So we have the main determinants of acid-base balance on screen right now. So like I mentioned earlier, carbon dioxide is regulated by the lungs and it can adjust quite quickly, whereas bicarbonate is regulated by the kidneys and it takes a bit more time to adjust to changes in acid-base balance. So let's first of all look at the example of respiratory acidosis. So respiratory acidosis occurs when there is a decrease in gas exchange in the lungs. So anything that promotes the retention of carbon dioxide can cause respiratory acidosis. And some examples include asthma, COPD, interstitial lung disease, and hyperventilation. So in this circumstance, given that it's a reversible equation, the increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide will lead to a shift in the equilibrium towards the left side of this equation. And hence you get an increase in the availability of protons, which in turn makes your pH go down. But this is what the equilibrium does. In an acute setting, if it's an acute respiratory acidosis, we will try and resolve this by facilitating the removal of carbon dioxide, for example, by ventilating the patient. However, there are many conditions in which patients will retain carbon dioxide chronically, such as COPD and interstitial lung disease. So if the patient seems to be retaining carbon dioxide over a long period of time, our kidneys will eventually detect this abnormality 
it will detect that the blood has become acidotic and seems to be persistently acidotic, in which case it will try to reabsorb more bicarbonate and increase the serum bicarbonate concentration in order to balance that equation. So this is described as metabolic compensation for chronic respiratory acidosis. So we often talk about how COPD patients might be chronic carbon dioxide retainers and how we need to adjust their oxygen targets accordingly. So the way we do this is by looking primarily at the bicarbonate concentration, because if their bicarbonate concentration is higher than the normal range, it suggests that their kidneys are trying to retain more of the bicarbonate to balance off a respiratory acidosis. Metabolic acidosis, on the other hand, is caused by an excess of various other acids, metabolic acids, such as ketones and lactic acid. So when you get excess acids from a different source coming into this system, the immediate reaction is for the protons to combine with bicarbonate and form carbonic acid. So the bicarbonate acts as a sponge where it's there to soak up these protons and form carbonic acid to prevent the protons from affecting the pH. So during an acute metabolic acidosis, the bicarbonate will cling on to the protons and form carbonic acid meaning that the serum bicarbonate concentration goes down. It pushes the equilibrium to the right and our lungs will try to adjust by increasing ventilation in order to blow off more CO2 and make the blood more alkaline and push it back towards a normal pH. So if we look at a couple of examples, we'll be able to apply that rationale. So firstly, we can see that the patient is acidotic. And secondly, we can see that the pCO2 is high with the patient being acidotic, which immediately tells you that this is a respiratory acidosis. The bicarbonate being high suggests that this has been a problem for a while. Perhaps the patient has decompensated now and become even more acidotic, but it's likely that the patient has been retaining carbon dioxide for a long time and their kidneys have had enough time to adjust their bicarbonate reabsorption to make amends for the acidosis. Another point to bear in mind is the concept of respiratory failure. So respiratory failure can be defined as either type 1 respiratory failure or type 2 respiratory failure. And I like to think of it as either one thing being wrong or two things being wrong. So in type 1 respiratory failure, we have a PaO2 of less than 8 kilopascals, whereas in type 2 respiratory failure, we have both a PaO2 less than 8 and a PCO2, which is greater than 6. So this would be type 2 respiratory failure on a background of chronic respiratory acidosis. If we look at one more example, we have the same pH suggesting that the patient is acidotic. Their PCO2 is low, which means that their breathing has increased to try and blow off some of this carbon dioxide and make the blood less acidic. The bicarbonate has decreased, which suggests that some of it has combined with protons to form carbonic acid and perform its function as being a buffer or a sponge. And finally, we can see that there is a clear cause of the metabolic acidosis, the lactate is elevated. So when it comes to compensation, we can also describe it as being either partial or complete. And all that means is that if it's partial, the pH is still abnormal. It suggests that your lungs are trying their best to normalize the pH, however, it's not quite able to do enough. Whereas complete compensation is when the lungs are able to increase their ventilatory rate enough to normalize the pH in spite of the presence of these excess metabolic acids. So this is metabolic acidosis with partial respiratory compensation.